Hello and welcome. It is Tuesday, November 5th, 2024, and we are back to slow our roll. It is election day. I didn't even want to mention that. The election special. Everything is political. <laughs> Nothing is um, off limits, I guess, you know. <laughs> Nothing but telling you exactly who to vote for and trashing the other side. Yeah. As every American does. <laughs> uh, yes, Election Day special. And mm-hmm. it will be nothing related. Yes. It just, no. happened, it just happened to be. That the, my, one day, the one day you had that off. That my job week. gave me this day off. <laughs> so this was the only day we could do it. They really wanted to Although we, did it, we do like to do it on Tuesdays a lot anyway. We, Monday or Tuesday we try. Yeah. But it just hasn't worked out recently. No, I know. But my job just wanted me to vote, I guess. Yeah, they really did. They really did. Um, but hey, it being uh, the election day special, again, we're going to talk all politics. Nothing but uh, Packers, Lions, uh, the Rams, Seahawks game. Mm-hmm. Speaking of politics, Dennis Allen was fired. Mm. He deserved it. <laughs> I actually want to give them credit. They waited, the th- they gave him three years. Yeah. Not a full three, but... You know. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you lost to the Panthers. That's that's a fireball. You've lost seven in a row. <laughs> and that, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk the Bruins. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell everyone to calm down. Mm-hmm. It's not so bad. Obviously, Patriots and uh, a little bit of college football. But uh, at least that's what I have listed in front of me. There might be an audible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we'll see. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Dom, kick it off with not football. All right. So, listen, I did a rant on this two to three years ago, so I'm not going through all the historical stats on this, all right? It's on the Instagram page. We don't even have that much on there. You can go find it. Um, But guess who led baseball in home runs again? Shohei Otani. No. (laughs) Team. Uh, I don't even think it was Shohei Otani. The New York Yankees did. I know. Once again, we led all of baseball in home runs. And don't let... The fact that they made the World Series this year fool you that this is any different than all the other teams. The only reason they made the World Series this year is because the American League was bad. Baltimore's pitching fell apart. Cleveland is still Cleveland, and Houston's not the same team anymore. They were the beneficial of a very watered-down American League. But this was still the same team. And once again, the league-leading team in home runs doesn't win the World Series. Now, I guess they at least made it this time. You already know why I think they made it. But once again, they didn't win the World Series, and it wasn't even close. They got whooped by the Dodgers in all phases, pretty much. They won one game. That was pretty much it. They embarrassed themselves in that final game after having a hot start. And this is it again. I mean, this is the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. They once again... Home run reliant team, we're not going to do anything else. We're not going to field well. We're not going to run the bases. We don't care about a batting average. We don't care about situational hitting. We don't care about any of it. And then once it comes time to trade for some things to add to the team, what do they go do? They trade for Jazz Chisholm, a low average, does not walk, home run guy. And then to go along with it, they go, Yes, that's what we needed to add to Judge and Stanton and Soto. But we're going to stick him at third base just because we need that bat in the lineup, even though that's not the position he plays. But it will be okay. They'll figure it out. Well, you didn't figure it out because he was terrible defensively in the postseason. He did dumb things. He's standing around. He doesn't know where he needs to be. The outfield for the Yankees is awful. They don't have a single gold glover. They didn't even have a gold glove finalist on this team. No. I thought Soto and um, I thought Soto was maybe Soto was, and I'm misreading. I thought no, that. I thought they had two. I, I know Ver- no Verdugo was. He was a finalist. Oh, you're right. Verdugo. And then like he got they got so much crap online for like why are these people finalists? Okay, maybe Verdugo was a finalist, but they didn't win a single Gold Glove, and they don't steal bases, and in general they don't field well. But what do they do? They hit the ball out of the ballpark, and that's about it. And what happened? What have I said so many times? Playoff weather. It is colder. The pitching is better. You cannot just rely on home runs because you're not going to get as many mistakes. And when you're relying on home runs, that usually means that your lineup is full of very streaky hitters. And what happened in the playoffs? Once they faced the Dodgers, they went ice cold. Apart from Stanton, everyone in that lineup went ice cold. Aaron Judge was cold the entire playoffs. So it's more of the same here. And I'm sure it's not going to change because they at least made the World Series this time. So Cashman and... The Yankee brass and the owner are going to think that they're on the right track and they just ran into a buzzsaw. That's not what happened. You were the same team that you've always been. You just were the beneficiary of a terrible American league. 
that allowed you to get there. But once you got there, it wasn't even close because you're no different than all the other teams of the last five to six years that we have talked about. Once again, same thing. Dodgers didn't finish second either. Dodgers finished third in home runs, which not saying you can't be a home run. You can hit a lot of home runs, but Mookie hits for an average. Shohei hits for an average. The team fields. The team will run the bases and steal bases and take the extra base. They will do all the other stuff that you have to do in the playoffs because the pitching is so much significantly better. You're never facing another team's middle reliever. If the other team's starter doesn't have it, they're taking him out in the second or third inning, unlike in the regular season where they might just let him get hit. Like, it's not the same. The game is not the same. The margins get smaller. The managing is different. You need to do other things. But the Yankees, Jazz Chisholm at the trade deadline. That's what we need. A 245, 250 hitter at best who does not walk and hits the ball out of the ballpark. And to go on top of it, let's stick him at a position he doesn't play. And it came back to bite them in the end. So, thoughts? Mike Williams was just traded to the Steelers. Oh, okay, nice. (laughs) I saw that. Um, I mean, I don't even think, I mean, other than Stanton, who hit even before the World Series? No one. Uh, Judge had that one mm-hmm. against Class A. I've Soto had some moments, but you're right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to disrespect the good name of Juan Soto. Mm-hmm. I like Juan Soto. But other than them two, and again, Judge's one hit against Class A, who was mm-hmm. falling apart anyway. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. And yes, Jazz Chisholm hit some home runs in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Or any significant? No. No. I guess you could count that. First inning game five one being significant, yeah, because the game ended close, but you lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Verdugo. I mean, Verdugo had actually some, a couple hits against like the Royals. Yeah. Uh, you know, Volpe had the grand slam in the World Series, mm-hmm. but that's it. They all had either no moments or one at best mm-hmm. that ended up being kind of insignificant mm-hmm. because they were on in the World Series, which you. Only won one game of, mm-hmm. or they were you know against the the Royals and the Guardians who were blowing up anyway, falling apart anyway. We're just kind of happy to be there, especially in the Royals' case. Now, obviously, Cleveland thought they had a lot more of a chance, and I thought they had a lot more of a chance. Mm-hmm. But that's still an AL Central team. I've, yeah, right. That was all you had to go through to get to the Dodgers. And then, as competitive as some of the games were, it wasn't. A close World Series. No. Game one was close and very entertaining. But, like, you know, looking back, how stupid. Like, you should have won that game if you're the Yankees. Mm -hmm. You you, you really had a chance to. You you know, you're leading going into the end of the inning or the the ninth inning or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yet yet you have Aaron Boone, who somehow still has a job, called on a guy. (laughs) I get it. It was lefty. It was lefty on lefty call. That's the one thing I get. But if you look at the stats, actually in that situation, Freddie Freeman, mm. bases loaded, lefty on lefty, he he thrives. Mm-hmm. He, he it doesn't matter the pitching who what he's a righty or lefty pitcher. In the situation, mm. uh, Freddie Freeman has the advantage because he's just he's just a dog like that. He's got balls. Mm-hmm. And like you know, Mookie coming into this world, coming into this playoffs, he had he had the. Uh, the narrative of like this guy doesn't he's not a big game performer you turn Mookie Betts into a World Series hero mm-hmm. um but even like Shohei Otani didn't really contribute at all no he didn't he didn't need to because the Yankees just blew it at every turn they get yeah. there there and, was and the oppor- Dodgers have people who can pick up the slack if you get cold the Yankees don't there the is, Yankees have three people if you get through them you feel real good about your chances there is but I still feel like more than anything else even though it wasn't close like the Yankees really tried their hardest to lose at every every you know big point they failed in some form whether it be Aaron Boone mm-hmm. mismanaging the players making a stupid play or just you know they actually suck and they can't get it done in a big situation mm-hmm. and that's what it always came down to Aaron Boone had a chance to win game 1 Aaron Boone I, the pitching you know first messed it up and then Aaron Boone made sure that there was no chance to winning that game uh and, you know come in in Yankee Stadium uh, he had, 
everyone's so shook that the fans are wrestling Mookie Betts in the outfield or whatever. <laughs> like it was it was an embarrassing for everyone involved for mm-hmm. New York. Again, somehow still Aaron Boone still has a job. Uh you know, I guess Aaron Judge you could say was exposed, but we've said for years now he's gonna really play a performer. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just it just really, really showed in this one. And it it's really even kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Of all the people that dragged them to this position to even get to the World Series, it was John Carlos Stan. I know, right? A guy that Yankee fans crapped on for years, I've booed. Uh, wanted to get rid of, and uh, it was him, mm-hmm. and nobody else. Uh, yeah, Juan Soto, blah 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 blah. But like even the moments where you had big pitching, we've been uh, critical of Carlos Rodon and the Yankees. Had his moments in the playoffs, actually looked really good in some of these starts. Mm-hmm. And so many times they either he himself folded or the bullpen folded behind him, mm-hmm. meaning nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Garrett Cole had actually a decent playoff. But when it came down to it, when a one inning, one inning started to unravel, he folded like a little girl. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't even cover first base. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care if you thought Anthony Rizzo should have easily beat out Mookie Betts to the base. You should just instinctively go to possibly cover just in case. Yeah, well, Aaron Boone's just the manager, and case. they don't care about defense when they put this team together. And it's it's funny because, like, you know, we all, we all saw that play a hundred times at this point. Yeah. First couple steps from Cole were yes to the base, as they instinctively should be. And then he kind of saw that Rizzo was going to make an easy play, I guess, on the ball. He's like, all right, you got it. Starts walking back and then starts pointing at the base. Like, do it, bro. As if that will somehow make Anthony, like, as if, like, Anthony didn't know what he was doing. Uh, it's crazy. Like, it, 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 it's, I mean, it's, I, I had a rant. And you know I'm right because the Dodgers said this themselves. Like yeah, the scouting but, report has come out. It's well, been made. Joe it's Kelly been, said it. Yeah. And Joe Kelly said it, but it's been made public. This is literally quote for quote what Joel Sherman said. That the value was very high to put the ball in play to make the Yankees execute. The Dodgers did not believe that they could execute. Uh, when they did the film, that if you run the bases with purpose and aggression, the Yankees will self inflict harm. Uh, it was exposed many times, by the way, by Betts and Freddie and Edmund. Um, They also were absolutely shocked when they looked at the film how often on relay throws, guys were not in the right place. Jad Chisholm (laughs) never knew where to be on a relay throw when balls would come skipping into the infield. Chisholm would be standing still on plenty of relay throws instead of in position to either back up or to be in a position to make a relay home. That's not even Chisholm's fault. I'm not saying it's Chisholm's fault. He's never played third. That's that. But the arrogance. Let's get another guy who, again... Not going to hit for average, hit the ball out of the ballpark, but uh, we've got to extend the lineup. But let's have him do the same things the other guys do, and let's stick him at a position he's never played before. Yeah, that's not Chisholm's fault. I know. I'm not blaming Jazz. There are some things that, like, all right, you should probably know at least when you're going to, you're supposed to, when you are supposed to be the cutoff. Yeah, but that's on the manager. Where's Boone at? Boone played third. I, all right, right, that is funny. (laughs) Um, Although, I, I, as not a Major League Baseball player, do know when. And who is always supposed to take the cutoff? Mm-hmm. I know this. Yeah. I was hoping Jazz would. Yeah. But uh, p- position wise, okay, you know, he's mm-hmm. he doesn't he shouldn't know all these things. And uh, you know, in 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 the moment, you know, you're standing there at third, being like, I don't really know how to do this. Yes. And then ball gets ripped over your head, and you're like, ah, and you have that moment of panic. Like, yeah, oh wait, exactly. wait, what? What? I haven't done this ten thousand times. Yes. Yes. And like you know, that's that's a hilarious scouting report. These are the New York Yankees. I had a, I don't remember when it was. Mm-hmm. A year ago. Yeah. I'm talking about like how I'm embarrassed on behalf of the Yankees. Like yeah. this used to be the evil empire. This is the this is the team all other 29 teams was gunning for, trying to emulate, trying to be. Mm-hmm. And now they're just they are embarrassing themselves on the world stage in front of the entire world because we know Asia was watching. Mm-hmm. Like that's oh my god. Not like st- Steinbrenner, because, the, because they made the World Series this year, they'll watch. It's going to be business as usual. Steinbrenner, like the real one. Yeah. Like if he was alive for that. I mean, yeah, if he was alive, it wouldn't get to this. And oh, I know, yeah, Cashman and I know would have been fired years ago. I know that for a fact. I know Giancarlo probably would have been you know, traded a long time ago <laughs> if they even brought him in in the first place. Uh, I don't think Jazz Chisholm. Here's the thing. I'm not the guy that bashes Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. I know, and he gets on under a lot of people's skin. 
mm -hmm. uh, because of how loud and and emotionally is on the field. But, but That's I'm, so not the Steinbrenner guy. I and know. They probably wouldn't have never brought him in the but first But I'm not place. even trying to blame Jazz right now. No, I'm, I'm not saying I'm Jazz is, is the symptom no, of I'm the not, problem. No, I'm not. I am in no way bashing Jazz Chisholm. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm not either. I'm just saying it shows like. Yes. No, yeah. We got a guy who Don't does we? the same thing as everybody else. We're and saying the stuck same thing. Him. Yeah, okay. But wait, it's not bashing Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. And I you, honestly, I'm not really bashing like too many of the players themselves. They were coached bad, put in the wrong spot, and on the wrong team. Mm -hmm. Like, some of these guys, like, there's a breed of player to be on the Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers, Cubs. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can even put the Giants in there. Mm -hmm. um, Cardinals. Just these teams that are the gold standard everyone looks up to. They always do things the right way. They're always classy about it. Like, you know, the, uh, and, um, the fans are rabid as part of it. The media is rabid. And you have a certain amount, a guy that can play in that environment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Yankees, you know, it used to be just get the best player, just get the most expensive player, and we'll win. But that used to be that guy was always headstrong, mm -hmm. could take it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not in that age anymore. Mm -hmm. We're just not. These players are their own people, their own personality. They're not just baseball players. They are more than that, for better and worse. And, you know, you're looking for a breed of guy. It's not just the best guy. You need a guy that is cut out for the New York market, that is cut out for the New York media and the New York fans. Mm. And I'm not saying these guys aren't, but, like, I don't know. Judge is not loud. Mm. Not huge. Like, you know, he puts up numbers, but then he quietly kind of just goes back to the dugout and does his thing. Mm. Like, as much as I just said a minute ago, I think Soto's. Jazz. I think Soto's the only one that I would say fits the mold of this team. From what the Yankees always were. I mean, yeah. listen, he almost single-handedly carried Washington sure. to that title. Him and Strasburg. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, Juan Soto is a great actual Yankee fit from what it used to be, the culture they used to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Volpe kind of is. I just don't like him personally. He annoys me. Mm -hmm. He grew up a Yankees fan, so he's just a... Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think maybe Carlos Rodon could be. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, it's it's... I don't know. It's so much of, like, yeah, just the sexy old... We still think it's the 2000s, so just get the biggest bat. Mm -hmm. Who cares if they can field? Mm -hmm. We're just going to get the guy that can throw the hardest, get the most strikeouts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. As much as we bash on analytics, we are in the age of analytics, and it matters. Mm -hmm. It is a part of our game, and it's you know it's should be st supposed to be used as part of the strategy of the game. It's not supposed to control the game, mm -hmm. like you know some 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 guys do. But like, as as bad as the Dodgers and uh, Dave Roberts is with over analytics. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Yankees don't have a clue how to read analytics. Mm, I know. Oh, yeah. stats. Like, look at all those home runs, RBIs. You win games with run, right? Yeah. You strike out guy, you keep him off base, he can't <laughs> score, right? Yeah. You, you know, ignoring the fact that heavy strikeout guys tend to be heavy walk guys. Mm -hmm. but I, know. Like, I know. I know. A but lack of ability to adapt. Yep, that's and like I said, they won. They got to the World Series though, so watch. It's going to be business as usual with them. They're not going to see the problem. But this, you got to the World Series for a very specific reason, and I've already stated what that was. This is no different than the other teams of the last five to six years that have fallen short. Actually, longer than that, probably seven, eight. But anyway, well, with that, the difference is there. Everyone is way overpaid. Yeah, everyone is so expensive for what? I don't know. Anyway, with that, Jesse. Get us started as we go into the football talk. Oh, those Patriots. Let's talk those Pats. Those. I actually thought that was best case scenario. Drake looked good. Drake makes some big plays in the moment. One of them was kind of lucky, but whatever. But you lost in the end. Because, like, <laughs> at the end, we kind of want to lose games. Higher pick, you can trade it for more draft picks because you're obviously not taking a quarterback. But I don't know. You, you can tell me I'm wrong. I, I, no, I get that. And I don't, I'm not disagree with that. And, like, I'm not like, oh, they lost. No. To the Titans. And Bar no, I don't care that much. Like, because, like, yeah. like, But I don't, you know, I don't care about the first overall pick. Because, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a QB. Well, I would love it's, the first overall pick, though. Because then you, you can, can trade, trade it, it and yeah. you would get a haul for it. I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't 100% trust these guys to get that done well, but I guess. But, no, it's, it's – and I said this last week. I don't care that much about wins and losses. It's not really about that. You know, I, I guess I would prefer them to win in some ways because, like, I can see um, this coaching staff getting better. Mm -hmm. And I we I would like that. I would very much like that. I would 100% like to be wrong about Gerard Mayo and all that. Um, but, on, yes, there's the flip side of, oh, draft pick, draft pick. This team does suck. Man, mm -hmm. does this team suck. Um, 
and it's yeah. I mean, I said this last week about like how all I want to see is Drake may do well, mm-hmm. not get hurt, and play well. You know, there was that first pick. I saw a little bit of the feet stuff. I was like, ooh, that mm-hmm. looked good. And then the, you know, f- I mean, the last pick didn't look great either. But I there was some stuff with Kenneth Kenneth Bourne like falling down on the play, whatever. He has some of that bad old school, I guess a little bit, Josh Allen in the pocket stuff. But I also see the new age, modern Josh Allen, hard to tackle, Mm -hmm. you know, gamesmanship, uh, can move the pocket, can run with the ball. And you know what? Damn good at keeping a play alive. Mm -hmm. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. That stuff makes me feel good. And the more I see that and the more of the feet stuff go away, you know, just, you know, just come less and less obvious, less and less frequent. Then I'm like, all right, that's fine. You lost to the Titans. Because, again, I want to see, you know, I don't care if Hunter Henry does good. Personally, sure, good for Hunter Henry, blah, blah, blah. He's not a part of his future plans. Mm-hmm. Ramondre Stevenson, good player. I hope he works out for him in the NFL. He's not a part of our future plans. No. All I really care about is Drake May, Christian Gonzalez, Keon White, Duggar, and I guess Polk and uh, the other one. Douglas? Uh, you know, yeah, you're right. Douglas, is, Douglas, Booty, they're all young, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. But realistically, I don't see them in part, huge part, all of them especially, in part mm-hmm. of the long-term plans. No. Maybe one of them. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just thought the takeaways were uh, Drake May looks better. Uh, I can see also why Drake May, they didn't want him to start because, you know, he played like a rookie. He, he did have two turnovers. Yeah. One of them was pretty awful. Yeah. Actually, did he have three turnovers? Did he have a fumble too? I, I'm trying to remember. I, I know I knew he threw two picks. And one of them was pretty damn awful. Yes. And he had some moments with those feet in the pocket where you're just like, ugh. Ah. And again, if your offensive line sucks, right, and you're trying to teach a kid to have better footwork, well, if the O line's gonna suck and he's gonna be under duress all the time, he's going to regress back to what he knows, which is what you're trying to get out of him. Mm, so, yeah. like, that was one of the just fundamental, like, little pieces that I really hated about him starting. But I do – I am seeing improvement, and you're seeing the talent. So I'm very I'm very positive about that. And I'm very positive that we didn't embarrass ourselves. We didn't puke all over ourselves. It was a fun game to watch. It was entertaining, and we lost in the end. Because I'd rather lose in the end at this point. Because you're not going anywhere, and you can get a nice high pick, and you can trade it for someone who needs a quarterback because you're not going to take one. Actually, Drake May fumbled twice, lost one. Okay. So a little bit of stuff that we need to clean up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know what's great about being dog shit? What? It's not really a rush on getting this guy good. Mm -hmm. You know, we can take our time with it. We can clearly identify something. Well, we're going to work on that for for a little while. We don't have to worry about this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Because we're not winning anything today. Who gives a crap? Oh, no. That type of stuff. So, like, yeah, I mean, this concerning thing, and we, you know, it comes back to I am concerned about this coaching staff being the ones to try to get it out of them mm-hmm. to coach them up but we'll see you know in theory they are still professionals and they are still nfl guys mm-hmm. and they still had their jobs they got their first jobs for a reason so they at least know something mm-hmm. so hopefully we don't bears this no i know we don't panthers this i know uh yeah so with that actually quickly before i talk usc let's Let's talk the Sunday, uh, the Monday night football game. We know what the Chiefs are. I'm not going to go into that. Like, I want to first say I think the Bucks should feel held held high. You've been dealt some horrible cards, but I would continue to say you lost your OC before, and your new OC I think is awesome. Liam Cohen I think showed his stuff. He's going to get Steve Spags that defense. He's down all three of his wide receivers. There was a stat they pulled up in the fourth quarter. They had two catches by wide receivers. He's got Baker Mayfield out here playing with two tight ends and running backs. That's all he's got to throw to. And they were moving the ball. And they and you kind of it felt like it was over when the Chiefs took that lead. You're like, there's no way. This hamstrung, they're gonna move the ball down the field and tie this game. And they were able to do it. So I think you got a solid coaching staff. I don't care what the final record is at this point. You can't fire Todd Bowles. They will not fire Todd Bowles. Trust me, he's safe. But uh I think Tampa, I think Tampa's got a Got a real uh, elite staff going on there right now. And we know Bowles can coach a defense. So, um, But with that, I'm not calling them dumb. I'm not ripping them. Generally, I think coaches do this too much, which is go for the win and go for the two. However, I will say this. 
Of course, Todd didn't because he's a defensive guy. They tend to be more conservative. If there was ever a time to go for two and go for the win, that felt like it was that time. You are down all three of your wide receivers. You're playing the best team in the league, Andy Reid, Spags, Patrick Mahomes, and it. everyone's like, we've never... I love this when media starts doing this. We've never seen this before, and Twitter starts saying that. The minute you give him the ball in a game-winning chance, he always wins. What are you talking about? We never saw this. This was Tom. Tom for a decade, or more than that, really. Like, if New England had the ball with two minutes or under left and a chance to win the game, you knew it was over. Everybody knew it was over. They were going to go down the field. They're going to win the game. That's what it is with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs now. It, Patrick has reached that point. And... So basically, it came down to you better win that damn coin toss. And even if you win the coin toss, you're going to have to then go down the field against a spag defense that wasn't playing prevent, at least. Because, like, let's be honest, in the Bucks game tying drive, at least in the beginning of it, you know, KC's playing soft coverage. Because the last thing they want to do is give up the big play and make it too easy. You want to make them earn it. But... In OT, you're facing, it's almost like a whole new game, right? Everybody resets. They're just going to call the defense the way they're going to call it. And you're doing this with Kate Auten and two running backs and another tight end. Like, you know what I mean? So you're banking on, we get the ball first so Patrick doesn't get it. And we have to go in a new set game, not soft coverage, go down the field, score a touchdown and win the game against the Spags defense. I thought that was, if there was ever a time to go for two and go for the win, that was it. I mean, you can, because I know you were like, and again, I'm not calling him an idiot, but missed opportunity in my opinion. I, I said to you last night, like I'm never, I'm almost never of the mindset of go for two in that situation. Because mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, you, you don't get it, you lose. Yeah. And maybe if I had at least one of Mike, Will- or Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, I would. Mm-hmm. But, like, at that point, if you go for two, like, you're not – you're showing you can't really run those two yards. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I guarantee they would stack that box, mm-hmm. which leaves you one option. Kate Otten mm. for two yards. I don't like those odds. I just don't. Okay. And, like, but Ca- I never like – Kate's a big target who can just he's go not, up and muscle for uh, that. And you could – I would put two running backs in the backfield because they both can catch out of the backfield. So then you at least have to worry about both guys coming out, and then you also have Auden. Uh, perhaps. Mm-hmm. I also just like, you know, the odds are against you will make it in mm. if you at least go. And again, if you at least go to overtime, you got a chance to win. You got a 50 shot to get the ball first. And from the perspective of, like, the Bucks and their defense, you played well all game. Mm-hmm. It's not like they were imposing your will on you in any way. The running game was working for the Chiefs, mm-hmm. but it wasn't all day. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, in theory, like, they weren't passing on you all day. Mm-hmm. So you just had to stop the run. If you really focus on that, you know, maybe. And up in that point, like, once they took the 17, was it 17-10? Mm-hmm. They took the 17-10 lead. The defense just sat. Mm. Sat and sat and sat. Bucks on the ball. Yeah, there was that moment of, like, the Chiefs were on the field for those three plays which killed like 20 seconds of clock, mm-hmm. two timeouts. Like, the defense did nothing in that time. Oh, okay. They were rested. All right. I, I just feel like we've reached the Brady moment where, like, if you give him a chance to win the game, that mindset, no matter that's how— That's a losing mindset. I, I know you feel that way, but— I mean, Bill thought that way against Peyton Manning, and that's why he went for it on his own— uh, And how did that go? I know. I know. It didn't work out in the end, but just saying, I don't know. I, it's reached that point. If you give Patrick the ball with a chance to win the game, he's going to win the game. No matter how the game has played out. It's just it's gotten to that point. And it I was mean, like that with Tom these, in New England. How do these people not think more than ever that that's not going to be the case? Like they every yeah, you know, yeah, they're 8-0. Has any game they looked great? No, I'm not saying they look great. I'm just saying if you give them that situation, they're going to make it happen. And by the way, but they're not. And by the way, if if Tampa had had their weapons, and again, they're more vulnerable than ever. If Tampa had had their weapons, I wouldn't have gone for the win because then I at least feel it's 50 50. Because I feel that if I get the ball, I can go down the field and score a touchdown. I'm not that confident that they were going to be able to ham and egger it again, just 
with duct tape and, and paper clips go back down the field again, even if they got the ball first and score a touchdown and close out the game. I don't know. I look at it as you held the Chiefs to under 20 points. You are tied with them without any of your key players, and your defense is rested. Mm. Okay. All right. And again, I, uh, this is why I want to have this conversation because I want to I mean, see what I, your points were. Listen, I get the And again, nice. I'm not calling him an idiot. I don't think this makes him a dumbass. I just, it felt like if there was ever a time to do it, that, that was it. But I, mean, I, I get your understanding. If it was, I mean, it was an arrowhead. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I saw, like, like, listen, it is Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid in arrowhead, blah, 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 blah. I even, like, obviously they were going to get in the coin toss. They always do. Um, and, like, I get that. Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like if they were in Tampa Bay, just the internet would be giving them a whole lot less crap. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, that stuff. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I, I get it, but, like, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> All right. I don't care about that. Okay. They're, they're more vulnerable than ever. They weren't passing well. I mean, the only person he could throw to was Travis Kelsey. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like he was, like, getting those big Kelsey plays. Mm -hmm. It was, was it 12 catches for 100 yards? Mm -hmm. Like, everything was a dink and dunk. Yeah, it was. But I got you. All right. Before we go to our break, I'm going to talk USC again. Um, they lose to Washington 26-21. This is a Washington team, Washington team who's still good. But their coach has left, so it's Jeb Fisher, who, by the way, I think Lincoln Riley lost to either last year or almost lost to again when he was coaching Arizona. So that's not great. That seems like you have someone in division who just is a better coach than yours. But they fall they fall to four and five now. And I think USC and Riley is officially – we got ourselves a Jimbo Fisher watch. Jimbo Fisher and A&M, they paid him a ton of money, and he just completely fell flat on his face. And Lincoln, I don't know what the problem is. Um, I mean, you got to bring up the fact that, listen, he took over a Rolls Royce when he took over Stoops' program in Oklahoma. He has never built a program up himself. And Clay Helton and USC had fallen on hard times. Like, they did not have a lot of NFL talent in the building. Helton was not a great recruiter. Um, it was a staff that seemed overwhelmed sometimes. Like, USC had fallen. So it was Lincoln having to rebuild that. Then they go to the Big Ten. And I just, I think personality-wise, Lincoln doesn't fit Southern California. He seems more like a small-time, small-town guy. I mean, for the second time, he did it last year and he did it again. He, he has now kicked the media out of the building. They're not allowed at practices and stuff like that. And it's like, Lincoln, that's a Norman, Oklahoma move. The Los Angeles media doesn't care that much. If you don't want to give them access, then they'll go do something else. Like, there's so many other things to worry about. And it's not going to help you because it's going to continue with you being irrelevant until you have to start stringing wins together. And right now, that's a problem. And, you know, he lost Caleb Williams. I understand that. But Brian Kelly's in his third year at LSU. And he lost a Heisman winning quarterback and two first round wide receivers. And they at least beat Ole Miss. And they're 6-2. And, and I know USC won that game against them to start the year. But what have they done since? USC has regressed. Brian Kelly and LSU is getting better. This is year three for Lincoln. And Kelly's in the SEC. So, and, and there's so much money committed that this is not going to change anytime soon. Which, again, is why I say this is a Jimbo Fisher watch. Where both people, it's like a relationship that you know is over. But no one wants to admit that it's over. Like, that's what it was with Jimbo Fisher at AM. That's what it's going to be, I think, in another year or two with Lincoln and USC. They can't financially move on, and Lincoln's not going to say anything because obviously you're still going to take the money. But everybody wants a breakup. I think Lincoln even is getting close to Lincoln wants a breakup because I think he's realizing that uh, this, this was not the best spot for him. So, and the thing is, they're getting killed in recruiting. Like, Oregon is dominating Southern California recruiting right now, and they have been for a while. Lincoln can't even win in his own backyard in recruiting right now. He's got a, two tackles from Wyoming starting. And they've done okay in the transfer portal, but when the high school recruits, Oregon is getting whoever they want. Washington comes in and does that. And we know all the SEC programs have been cherry-picking the area for a long time, but Lincoln can't even win in his own backyard right now, so... I mean, I actually, it, it's hard to understate how bad this is really going at USC right now. 
And again, when you think about it too, to make it worse, Lincoln has never shown that he can build a program from the ground up. He took over a machine that was humming from Bob Stutes at Oklahoma. So Jimbo Fisher watch uh, is in effect right now at USC with Lincoln Riley. I know you probably don't have anything to add here, but. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore was traded to the Commanders. Oh, interesting. You didn't see that one? No, I didn't. That one was like an hour ago. Damn. You know, did you see that report last week where a bunch of players are trying to go to the Commanders? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They got momentum rolling right now. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Now that uh... It's so nice. It's also nice because you're like Dallas. You can't just beat up on two bad teams anymore. <laughs> it's funny. And now that Snyder's out and... Uh... Daniels is the QB. Yeah, like they. Uh, I also feel great because I picked them to make the playoffs. <laughs> but like, yeah, they're they are the culture everyone wants to be around right yeah, now. They are, they are. All right, with that, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we'll come back with some more NFL talk. Some of the bigger matchups of uh, last Sunday: the Packers, the Lions, the Rams, and the Seahawks. And obviously, as we talked about, New Orleans firing their coach. So stick with us, guys. And we are back at Slow Your Roll. Let's talk Packers-Lions. God damn, I lost a lot of money on this one. <laughs> yeah, that was the... Listen. I feel like this is one you wouldn't want to touch. In division... I know, but listen. In division, historically, Jared Goff outdoors in weather turns into a pumpkin. He's the best quarterback of the last decade against the spread. But when he plays outdoors, that falls to covering the spread only at 40%. When he plays in weather, it falls to 32, 33%. I mean, this is cl- this was classic Jared Goff pumpkin time. Did I felt like going into this game, though. But with, well, with Detroit has the ultimate trump card. Well, going into this game, like with Jamison Williams suspended, he's not an option. Uh, Jair Alexander was obviously going to go on St. Brown. Mm-hmm. I felt like going into this game. And also, like, I'm going to assume Detroit is aware of Jared Goff outside. Mm-hmm. I would hope they are. Yeah. I figured this is just yeah, the ball was going to be in Gibbs and Montgomery's hand. Mm-hmm. And, like, was it? Well, how many times did Jared Goff throw last week? Uh, it wasn't that much. Like 12 times. Yeah. I know. I thought, I, I, I thought it would be that again. I know. And, I, you know, not as easy mm-hmm. because – Packers are so much better than the Titans. But a lot of that, we are going to try to control the ball, keep it on the ground, and just not give them a chance. No, I Control know. clock. I know. I mean, it wasn't about Green Bay winning. It was about Green Bay covering, which was three and a half. I guess. So that's that's part of what I thought. I thought Goff will have at least one turnover in the weather and whatever. But, but he, I also, he was 18 of 22 for 145. 22 they kept, times. I know, right? But it was they kept it a lot of it pretty safe. Gibbs had 11 carries. Montgomery had 17. Um, you know, Amon Ra had seven catches and seven targets. The next person with the most was a tight end with three. So, like, the throws were near the line of scrimmage. You know that. Amon Ra is not a down the field guy. Yeah. So, but, yeah, they just have the ultimate trump card, and that is that offensive line. They don't have to throw the ball a lot, and they can still put up just as many points and cover a three-and-a-half point spread, apparently, because the offensive line in a day and age that we've talked about, because of the – collective bargaining agreement because of the way that these teams practice and because of the way the college game is offensive line play has never been worse, (laughs) but the lions are the outlier. And you know what? They're also, it it compounds, right? Not only are they the outlier, but then they're going against other defensive fronts that have become a little bit smaller, very hyper athletic because it's all about teams throwing all the time. So it's become about rushing the passer. So, you know, it's, it's a two way street that's helping them. Their offensive line is better than other old lines, and defensive lines have become a little bit more pass rush centric. Yeah. So now it's just it's a freaking steamroller, dude. <clears throat> They're just moving people all over the place. And you know, bad weather, Jared Goff doesn't matter. We'll ask him to complete like 16 passes, all within five yards. We'll run the ball 35 times, move everybody out of the way, and come out with dubs. So it's just. With San Francisco going through what they're going through right now, and and the Packers should be in that space, but Jordan Love is a very reckless player. Um, Oh. What? You saw the trade they made today, right? The Packers? The Lions. No. Really? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, man. I'm I'm breaking all the trade news? You really are. They traded for Zadarius Smith. Oh, wait. I did hear about that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Yes, the help of the pass rush, which is what they need. 
Um, I just, I don't see who's stopping them right now. Oh well, yeah, I mean after this like, week, like, I am like if outdoor if outdoor rainstorm isn't going to be enough to beat a Jared Goff led team, <laughs> I feel like everyone in the NFC is screwed. Because mm. again, historically, that's that's where you beat Jared. He turns into a pumpkin. He yeah. did it last year against the Bears, who sucked. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. They got a competent defense now. Yeah, and I mean after I'm sold, mm-hmm. unless some major injuries strike, mm-hmm. and it's possible. I mean I've always been sold. When we did the rankings, I had them as the best team in football. Right, the now. Lions are winning. They're winning the Super Bowl. Oof. They're winning the Super Bowl. I don't want to do that because I'm, I'm doing that. Okay, like you, you beat. I know there's a Titans team, and you had a bye week technically in between, because mm-hmm. you you played the tight you played the Titans, and I mean it was. Didn't they have like they had a, at least one touchdown on special teams, and I think a defensive touchdown. Yes, might have been more. Yes, Jared Goff didn't need to play. They, they scored 52 points, and he and he what would he throw? 13 passes, something like that, <laughs> like absurd. Yeah, but like the two the, the two games that sandwich that game mm-hmm. are on the road. Mm-hmm. Against division opponent, Packers, and on the road, mm-hmm. division opponent against Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Two teams that believe they can win the division. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't going well for Detroit, I believe that too. Mm-hmm. That's, I, again, there is an easy win. You probably were looking more at the Packers than the Titans mm-hmm. in that week. You still had two tough on the road divisional games and won them both mm-hmm. pretty convincingly. Yeah. You know, the the Minnesota one ended closer than yeah, it should have. Yeah, the Vikings have came back in the end. Because of a stupid fumble. But they dominated the game. They were clearly the better team both games. Mm-hmm. Like, again, on the road also. One of them was a dome. Mm-hmm. So we didn't at least see outside Jared Goff that day. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he didn't have Jamison Williams this week. Not that he's a huge part of this offense. But he but stretches he's a, the field vertically. He's a threat. He's someone you got to look at. And he's someone who can absolutely, uh, you know, make a huge play any given Sunday. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's been too easy. Now, maybe the NFC is weaker than I think it is. Maybe that's the case. Maybe the, the Detroit Lions are the one good team in a bad conference. I just don't believe that, though, because that's not been the trend. Mm-hmm. Like I, I believe, I you know I'm not that hype about Sam Darnold. He's I've I've liked what he's seen. I'm happy for him, but like the Brian Flores defense is legit. Mm-hmm. Jordan Love, maybe he got that contract a little too soon. We've mm-hmm. seen a couple bad turnovers from this year. He's had some injury problems as well, though. Man, are they well coached. Mm-hmm. San Francisco's had problems. I know they're still extremely talented, and CMC is coming back, so that could be a factor. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell is going on with Atlanta, but they win games. <laughs> so that's Washington's a good team. Like there are there are good teams here. Like I don't think it's a fluke. I don't think the conference sucks. No, I don't think it does either. I think they are they are just that much better. Yeah, I think I think this is the lot. I think this is the Niners teams like three or four years ago when everyone was. Not old in their prime, and the defense was was better than two because like San Francisco's defense is not what it used to be. Um, yeah, I don't know. And right now, with the bargaining agreement, with the way the game has changed, their offensive line is just such a trump card. It really is. I mean, you facing these D lines that are all about rushing the passer, and they just physically cannot hold up when when the lines just start body on body moving guys. I'm gonna. From the snap of the ball, my only job is to grab you here and move you over here. I don't have to backpedal and keep you in front of me. No, no, no. I'm just going to grab you and throw you over here, and the other guy's going to throw you over here, and we're going to open up a giant hole, and, the, and these D-lines just can't hand up. They can't hold up. Mm. So, it's wild. And, yeah, I, you know, I, I think the Packers, maybe they paid Jordan Love a little bit early. Um, it's not like the Tua thing, though. And all that. Like, I think they kind of had to. And I don't know if they could have franchise tagged him at that point. Maybe you could have. But, I mean, he played so well. Like, he was, like, the best quarterback in the NFL for, like, eight straight games. That's a long time. He's been in the building so long. And I still, I'm not, like, I'm not selling my stock. He's young still. 
It's only his second season starting. And he has, as you said, he's had some injuries. So he's like, hasn't been on the field all year, getting all the reps. Um, but he is a very reckless player. And I do think it's probably going to be his, I'm not going to say downfall because I think he's going to be very successful, but it will be his limitation. I think in some, you can coach some of this out of him, but I think it will always be part of who he is as a player. He's far more Brett Favre than he is Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. you know? So sure. we, we probably, you know, we probably rushed to anoint him a little early, but still he's, he's got all the tools. You don't usually just go on eight games heaters like that. Like he's good. He's good. I mean, I'm not saying you're like, oh my God, you made a huge mistake. He is too. Uh, no, 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 no. I, you made him, you maybe paid him too quick, but I do get he has been in the organization for a while. Mm -hmm. It is the trend going on. Lock up your QBs so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But like, he had one year, and as good as it was, I, I want to see, like, I want to see how a guy handles the league adjusting to them mm -hmm. before I give him a huge contract. Yeah. And he didn't have that opportunity yet. Okay, yeah. And, like, that could end up being regret mm -hmm. and a little bit for the Packers. I still think he's talented. I still think it'll work out for the most part. Mm -hmm. Just maybe you paid him too much too soon. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, We'll see. I don't know if they had much of an option, though. But, yeah, Dax overpaid. Trevor's overpaid. Yeah, but overpaid. they're all overpaid. <laughs> and at least with Jordan, I'm like, I... His physical characteristics are far more elite than some of the guys that got overpaid this offseason. Mm. Like, he's a far better, more athletic specimen than Dak Prescott. He throws <laughs> the ball better than Dak Prescott. He throws the ball. Like, he can do things that Prescott can't do. We know he can do things that Tua cannot do. And I don't know what the deal is with Trevor. I don't. We're going to we're gonna have a sit, we're gonna have a segment alone on Trevor at some point. You see that picture I posted, though? Yes, I did. Like the, you know, hello, human resources. <laughs> yeah. Even though, like, everyone's praising Mahomes' season, even though he hasn't really done much. But Trevor's mm. stats are all better than Patrick's, but everyone's trashing him. I know. But it's not about stats. You do have to watch the games. Yes. More than any other sport, I actually think stats matter almost the least with football. Especially yardage. Gosh, nothing is a uh, bigger lie than yardage sometimes. I think hockey could be the one. Okay, but you don't know enough. I don't know enough about hockey, so I can't. I can't. But I'm not saying you're wrong. I said that if the other, if it's any other one, it's hockey. Mm -hmm. I get you. All right, the next one for another game that happened. Rams Seahawks. So the Rams end up winning, takes an OT. The Rams have won three straight, and uh, they're legit. And I actually think we just talked about the Lions. Like when they're healthy, I think the Rams have an argument right now to be the second or third best team in the NFC. When they're healthy. Um, <laughs> like, Jordan loves Reckless, so is Stafford. But Stafford's better at it than, than Jordan. Like, Stafford isn't quite as bad. And he'll do things that Jordan can't do at this point. But anyway, that's not the point. The point here is, it's official. Seattle has jumped the shark with Geno Smith. You have reached your cap limit. And he has been an all-time successful bridge quarterback. They're not usually as successful as Geno was. And earlier in the year, they were putting up a lot of points, and we were starting to think, like, I don't know. Like, uh, is he better than we thought? And no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> because they're more healthy than the Rams. Their defense is more healthy than the Rams. Puka got ejected. Yeah. And they that was still, soft. And they still lost. And why? Because the difference is one team had Geno Smith, and the other had Matthew Stafford. And that's where, that's where Seahawks are. You have hit... That ceiling, you have jumped the shark. And now you know, and, and I'm not blaming the organization. I Actually, I want to give a thumbs up to John Schneider. John Schneider knows what he's doing. John Schneider moved off Russell Wilson. That was the right call. A few years ago, John Schneider tried to orchestrate a trade where he'd give up Wilson earlier so he could trade Josh Allen. I mean, so he could draft Josh Allen. That's aged pretty well. And did you hear the story that Geno Smith called John Schneider in the offseason this year to try to get a contract extension? And Schneider just hung up on him. I did not hear that. Yeah. So John John knows what's up. John knows how to evaluate this position. I think Seattle will be okay. Um, they're just sort of in limbo. This happens. Um, I thought maybe this year would have been the year they should have attempted to trade up and get one, but I understand that the Pats probably just weren't going to do it. We knew Washington wasn't going to do it. We knew the Bears weren't. So you didn't want to then trade up a bunch of picks to take the third or the fourth quarterback. So I understand it, but but Seattle, like, I can't take you seriously. 
we've we've realized what the ceiling is here with Geno Smith. As long as Stafford is playing for the Rams, and I still have trust that Shanahan can figure it out, even if this is maybe their down year and their weird year, like I can't take you seriously as a playoff contender, especially in your division when your quarterback is Geno Smith. Because we've seen in these games now, sometimes when you have the more talented roster, the difference is the Rams got Matthew Stafford, you're stuck with Geno. So that's where that's 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 just where Seattle's at. Okay. It seems like I mean, you don't agree. I there's a part of that where I'm like, that's not you didn't quite fa- make a fair assessment. Okay. When the Rams are healthy, he said, mm-hmm. could be the best team in the NFC. I'm not going to argue yay or nay on that. I didn't say bet. I said but second or third. When the Rams are healthy, I know, I know. And I know. Stafford and Geno Smith, who was missing for Geno Smith? I know he didn't have DK. He didn't have DK Metcalf. I know. He didn't have the number one receiver on his team. And I, listen. Puka got ejected so early. Which was soft. Okay, but then Stafford didn't soft, have his best wide receiver most call. of the game. Um, but, and I, I think Stafford is way better than Geno. I, you're correct. <laughs> they are limited with Geno. You're not winning anything with Geno. Blah, 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 blah. But we cannot say that it was a fair and there's so much better. DK wasn't there. We cannot. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. Okay. DK wasn't there. All right. He, uh, he wasn't on the field. But yes, I think the Rams healthier are better than Seattle. I do think Stafford, yes, better than Geno. Yeah. I, I, but that that you didn't. Mm-hmm. If you have, you didn't mention the DK thing. Mm-hmm. That's what bothered. Me. That's okay. why I didn't think it was quite fair what you were saying there. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily disagree with most of it, but you didn't give the full picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. But you're right. You know, Seattle's in a little limbo. They're good, but like, they don't have the QB, and they I, they, they should know this. They should know this. Mm-hmm. I would hope they would think, well, Geno's the guy. No, he's not. Mm-hmm. He's a great guy. Lovely guy. Great guy. Blah 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 blah. He's not the guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know, I still think Seattle's a great team. Uh, great's a little strong. A really good team. Mm-hmm. I like their talent on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I've I've liked the coaching, mm. but yeah, they're in the ball. That's I mean, fine. if I was Seattle, the Rams are too overrated by you. Okay, and, and Matthew Stafford, you, yeah, <laughs> Matthew Stafford is good. He's a good quarterback, but like he's a top five quarterback in this league. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Herbert, um, crap, Drake May. Shut Josh, up. I didn't say Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Josh you Allen. would take Lamar Jackson yes. over Matthew Stafford. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, kind of, yeah. One, one has won a Super Bowl. One has never been the problem for his team in, in the playoffs. One has consistently been the problem for his team in the playoffs. One ate two MVPs. Oh, two MVPs. <laughs> one of them was garbage, and you know that. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Sam Darnold. Shut up. Sam Darnold. Shut up. Do you like Goff better than uh, Matthew Stafford? Matthew Stafford. No. 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 He does not. No. Goff has no. a way better Who roster. Who exists? Who plays football? <laughs> See, you can't think Kyler of Kyler Murray. Oh, stop it. He's more talented. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's that's just where Seattle's at. Oh. Listen, if the Pats finish with, like, the second, first or second pick, I, Seattle's got to – I feel like Seattle should make that call. And it's going to cost a lot, but you have drafted absolutely superbly the last two to three years. John Schneider is really good at his job. And you will make it work with less picks down the road because, again, John Schneider has been able to show he can hit in the set, in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds. So, But they're never going to be up there that high enough in the next four to five years to draft a quarterback. CJ Stroud is better. No, he is not. Yes, he is. He has looked awful this year. It, it's so. He has not looked good. All right, listen, Matt Stafford at times has has made some boneheaded plays. And, you know, that's here's the thing. That is kind of the thing about Matt Stafford. Just every once in a while, he just makes a rookie play. Oh, I, I'm, not no saying that he's, I'm not saying he's not reckless. And that's why I'm just like, oh, it's, it's, Matt. I think Stroud, Matt. I think Stroud has fallen a little bit this year. Uh, sophomore slump. No, I know they've had some offensive line issues. I know he's ne- missing Nico. Diggs but, is on his team. But, like. 
dude, he's looked really bad sometimes. Well, Diggs is going to uh, send him, uh, push him back a couple years. He's going <laughs> to regress him. And then he will learn to overcome that drama and become better than he ever was. Okay. Well, right now he ain't, he ain't, he ain't as good as he was last year. I'll tell you that much. He looks like he's lost some poise. And I understand part of that, you know, missing guys, you're getting hit a lot. Like, I get it. But that's, that's where CJ's at right now. So. Well, they, they, they're adjusted to him. The defense adjusted to him. They it's did. his turn. All right. It's his turn. All right. We've had another firing. The Saints have fired a Bruce Allen. Bruce Allen. Dennis Allen. <laughs> Bruce Allen was the former executive for the Commanders. Um, Saints have fired Dennis Allen. I want to give New Orleans credit uh, because even though I felt like it was pretty obvious he probably wasn't right to be a head coach, they at least gave him ample amount of time. I believe this is his third year. Um, but, I mean, you lost seven straight. And you just lost to the Panthers. Yeah. And he's one of the worst coaches in his tenure as a head coach as a favorite against the spread. Like, he's... <laughs> He is just awful. And it's not like the division has been that good the last two years, and yet he can't make the playoffs. And he had Derek Carr back at least for that game. It's not like he was trotting out Spencer Rattler. And he had Chris Olave back until Derek Carr threw a hospital ball and got Olave killed again. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was time. It was time to go. I feel bad for them. I don't think they've really done anything wrong. Sean Payton just decided he needed a year off, well, they don't and they've been stuck ever since. And they got a guy who has regressed horribly in Derek Carr. And, yeah, that's, that's, mm. that's just where they're at right now. I don't know where they go from here. Um, I'd have to look. Well, it, it, it can't be a job that's very attractive. Not because they're a bad run, but they're in a, just a bad space. Um, they got a lot of older players. They owe Carr a lot of money. They've been up against the cap for the last two to three years. Been for, like, a decade. What? They've been in the, at, like... At the cap for like a decade. I know. That's what it feels like. Um, but yeah, there's just nothing you can do. I mean, Sean, your Super Bowl winning head coach just decided uh, after one season and after after a season, all of a sudden just, yeah, I want to take a year off. I'm good. I'm done. So just kind of left them holding the bag. I mean, you know, they should, they're going to be bad. They're going to have a good draft pick. You can draft a QB. Mm-hmm. And that'll, you know, help. They haven't had a QB mm-hmm. forever. I know. Like, who was it even before Carr? Uh, yeah, so that's part of why Sean, I think, was done after that year. He's like, I'm trying to just figure this thing out with Jameis Winston and uh, oh, Winston Taysom, was there. Taysom Hill. And there was another one. Oh, they had to play Ian Brock at some point, I think. Ian Brock. Who? Exactly. <laughs> Cause like, yeah. I mean, after I mean, even like the last hey, last hey, season, Ian, Drew Brees, Ian, Brooke, Ian Bar- Brooke beat Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was there. Oh, did that. he? Yeah, I was there for that game. Oh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> James uh, Winston got hurt, I think, in the second quarter, but they still ended up winning. Um, like even since Drew Brees, they've had like no quarterback. Mm-hmm. Even that last year, of Brees was he was washed. Oh, the, oh, it was limited. It he, was super limited. But like. I don't know. I mean, those first two games, they did look really good. Mm-hmm. There is talent they amongst did. amongst these guys here. Alvin Kamara still has a decent amount to give. You know, it's hard. You know, year to year, mm-hmm. an off season happens. You just you just wonder if a guy just falls off in that time. Mm-hmm. It can happen. But in theory, you know, Alvin Kamara still got a lot to give. You get a rookie quarterback. I love a guy like Alvin Kamara back there with a rookie quarterback, mm-hmm. veteran running back, but also a very dynamic one. Mm-hmm. That's a huge like just safety cushion. It's like, just who cares if you go through your reads well? Just mm-hmm. do it and give it to that guy, and you'll be fine. Dump it to him, and then he'll just rack up a thousand yards for you. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't have Michael Thomas anymore. That's a plus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's always helpful. <laughs> that's that's, that's a, helpful for the locker yeah. room at least. I mean, Chris Olave is good when he can stay on the field. Hopefully, you get a quarterback that doesn't kill him. Mm. That's, that's, I'm trying to hype up the Saints in some ways. Like, well, I mean, uh, I guess you just got. But rid the of, biggest, I was going to say, the, Marshawn Lattimore. You just traded that. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't have that anymore. Yeah, just. The, the, but the one thing for them, obviously, is it's just the hill. The hill to climb isn't as steep as it could be, though, because we all know the division's just still not good. Carolina looks hopeless still. Yeah, Atlanta. 
wins games. Yes. <laughs> it's not always inspiring. <laughs> it's closer than it should be, probably. And their quarterback is 35 off the Achilles tear. So the, the runway can't be that long. But they're doing, they're doing the thing. Yeah. yeah. Their rookie quarterback is sitting. Yes. With a veteran in front of him. And Tampa, their two best weapons are a little bit older now. And now Godwin has ex- sustained his second major injury. Ah. And Evans is significantly even older than Godwin and is having a hamstring problem. So that's another one where how long is the runway here with Tampa? I don't really know. I mean, a lot of the defense can't be that young. I mean, they're still using Carlton Davis, aren't they? Vita Vey has been in the league for a bit. So that's the one good thing with New Orleans is if they do hit on the quarterback or they go the veteran route again, but I doubt they would. Um, at least the, the division hill is not too steep. Carolina looks awful. Tampa and Atlanta, we both have to acknowledge we don't really know how long this runway is right now. So, you made a face. Was something happen? Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll see it. Oh, I saw it. That, I know it's, it's, it's a monstrosity. It's worse than you thought. What? The Fantasy League. Yes. Yeah, it's a terrible trade. Did you even see how large it is? Yeah, it's 40, four players. It's eight people. I know. It's also just a, like, he just made his team so much better. Who? I don't even know who. Nick made Cam's team way better. I guess. He Maybe. definitely I did. I mean, Derek Henry, yeah. But that's not the point. Um, oh, that's why I was just kind of like just sitting here making faces and not saying anything. Oh, like, yeah. No, I saw that earlier, actually. I was just ignoring it because we're on a podcast right now. Nobody cares. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, that's where they're at. Eberflus with the Bears. It's time to go. This this one <laughs> is like Chicago. I, I did this rant. Was it Justin? Was it the second year of Justin Fields? Or is it when they first drafted him? Oh, I don't know. When I called them the dumbest franchise, I think, in football. I was like, they're not the most dysfunctional. That's the Jets. But they might be the dumbest. And they freaking did it again. And I understand that Eberflus at least fixed his side of the ball last year. Especially at the end. And they look good in the end. A lot of them were bad teams. But at least Matt had coached up the defense. And the defense looks good this year, too. But if you were going to go back to the well again... And draft another rookie quarterback. Why do you think it's a good idea to pair him with another defensive coach? Unless you have an OC like Washington made sure they took care of the OC position with Cliff Kingsbury and all that. You tried to do this with Justin Fields and it didn't work out. And Chicago did it again. And the offense looks awful. It looks rudderless. The play calling is terrible. Shane Waldron said that he doesn't script plays, which is the bare minimum from what everybody does. In football, they do it in college too. He's like, "Oh, I'm a feel guy." Well, your feel sucks. <laughs> and Caleb's got no feel right now, and Matt can coach that defense up. But other than that, he looks kind of over his head. And I am not saying I don't think the Bears should fire him in season because it it looks bad, it looks dysfunctional, and you fall prey to what the Raiders fell prey to. Whereas the interim then comes in and has a little success. And then it's almost you're pressured and forced to hire a guy who never would have been on your radar as a head coach before that. And so it usually doesn't work out. It almost never works out. And Vegas is finding that out. I have a million things here for that. Not just the Raiders, but like just historically. There's a reason why an interim coach usually wasn't a head coach somewhere. So so I don't think they should fire Eberflus in season at this point. But like, they screwed it up again. I mean, I don't mind a defensive head coach as long as he got a guy with him. Like, you know, the the guru that'll work his magic on the other side of the ball. Because mm-hmm. I've said many a time, mm-hmm. and I still believe it, and I'm still seeing the trend, the future of NFL head coaches is defensive. Mm-hmm. And I still believe that. I mean, so I, like you gotta, I think when you're, if you're going to pair him with a quarterback that's at least veteran... Or you know you got an OC. Oh, yeah, you just get the OC. But, like, I want a head coach who's a defensive coach who has some experience. Like, Dan Quinn had some experience. Sure. Dan Quinn, Dan Quinn knows people. Dan Quinn has the Rolodex to go call Cliff Kingsbury and get Cliff to work for him. Mm. You know? Like, I don't sure. think Eberflus could do that. Like, I think Cliff would look at Eberflus and be like, I'm not gonna, you're not going to be the boss of me. I mean, I don't necessarily need a guy that's a veteran that can find... Well, if I'm pairing him with a rookie quarterback, though, I'm saying. Well... If I'm gonna fire, if I'm gonna hire a defensive head coach, and I'm about to draft a new quarterback, I have to have some assurances on what we're doing with the opposite side of the ball. 
And someone like Matt just doesn't give me that. You've never been a head coach. You don't have the Rolodex. You don't have like you know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess. But like, all right, Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. I know he's he's rolled with golf, veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, he rookie rookie coach, and he brought in his OC, who's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have trusted them with a rookie QB. Yeah, but Dan is older, and Dan has been around, and Dan has coached under Sean Payton. And Dan but he wasn't is... ever a head coach. No, but he's been around more. Eberflus ain't young. He's not. And also, is Dan a defensive head coach, or is he an off? Was he a former offensive lineman? I mean, he was a former tight end. Okay, but like, he's not. I mean, he's not. A def- I know he's not calling the plays. I understand. He's that, not a but... defensive head coach, but he's not a. He's, I, I, he's not an offensive coach. I don't know what that. But is. he's also a culture setter. I mean, I don't. Yes. Matt does not strike yes. me as a culture setter at all. I don't think he has that kind of presence. Um, no. I mean, you know, not everyone can be. Not everyone can be Dan Campbell. I know. But, you know, he was a rookie coach, and you know, I get, I get the idea of like, well, if he's a rookie coach, he doesn't have, like, he's going to have a bunch of other rookie or lesser known coaches and OCs. DC's under him mm-hmm. because like he doesn't have the respect yet. He doesn't have these guys that he's gathered over decades that like I really trust him. He's the good he's the mind I want with me. That mm-hmm. type of stuff. You know, Bill Belichick with the Ernie Adams and the Josh McDaniels and all these guys he had. Um so I get that. Mm. And I get the the you know, with a guy like Dan Quinn, he made sure to get a guru. A mm-hmm. a a guy that specifically speaks to the young QBs. Mm-hmm. To help with uh, Daniels, like that's I I that's very smart. Yeah. But like, Eberflus, I guess I you know he's, you know I, uh, I if he's if that if the Bears felt he was gonna be the guy, mm-hmm. and they were gonna stick with him over Justin Fields, because it kind of felt like at the end of last season it was, we're gonna pick the coach. And go with a new quarterback, or going with the quarterback, different coach. Well, yeah, that that was a point. They should have just they should have just cleaned the house and started over, in my opinion. But but I I think they thought well we've figured out one side of the ball. Mm. If Matt Eberflus says he has a guy that he thinks could speak to an actual, you know, a quarterback that is so talented we can't mess this up anyway. Mm-hmm. Why not at least have a side of the ball that is, you know, we don't have to worry about it all. Hmm. No, I get you. I'm not saying that's a great necessarily way to uh, go about your running your franchise, but I, I assume that was the logic. With this guy as our head coach, we know one side of the ball is set. Less important side of the ball, you could argue, hmm. but we know one side, 50% of the play is set. If we draft the QB that is just a surefire thing, cannot mess it up, hmm. who cares? We'll bring in some wide receivers, and then we'll just f- uh, thrive. Mm-hmm. It's not how it worked. No, not how it went. But I, I, I assume that was the thinking in the room. Yeah, we have Keenan. We have some veteran wide receivers. They're talented. And I would understand we that. Can't lose. And I would understand that thinking. And I would think it could work out in any other place. But like Chicago, you have shown for decades that you are, as an organization, just so tone deaf on offense that you probably have to like lean into that more. Mm. And probably go hire someone on that side of the ball, especially if you're going to go with a rookie again. Because you, you tried the pairing of the rookie or young QB with a defensive coach, and it already didn't work. And now you're about to do the exact same thing. So, uh, I mean, I would have I would have trusted a I mean I at a least far uh, superior organization to get it done. <laughs> I at least understood the reasoning for why they kept him. I'm just saying it seems clear that you made the wrong. Okay. And at the time, I right. I, I, right. I was okay. I did think it was the wrong decision, though I understood it. But I was like, dude, if if you're clean, I think you said it too, though. It's like I, if you're gonna stick with Fields, then keep the head coach. But if you're getting rid of Fields anyway, you should probably just start over in general. Maybe I said that. I think you did. <laughs> and I was the one who was like, I think you're right, but at the same time, I understand that they're not gonna fire him probably because he they feel he fixed his side of the ball at least, but. They made the wrong move. I would have if they and Waldron not scripting plays. <laughs> well, what the fuck? If he, you know, I'm gonna assume again. I'm I'm making more assumptions here. I'm gonna assume the owner of the Bears likes Eberflus. Mm-hmm. Whether it's just he really likes him personally, so he's willing to overlook things, or like he just actually thinks he's sitting up there like I'm in the room. I see why he's the guy. Mm-hmm. 
I, I kind of still think you should have sat Matt down and be like, listen, you picked wrong on some of your coaches. We're going to find some other ones. Yeah. We like your defensive input. We like how you're doing there. And yeah, listen, we're going to take they, offensive out of your hands. And what do they have? Four wins right now, I think. Four or five wins. The only reason they have those is because of the defense. So, like, his defense is balling. I get it. But it's just so pitiful and awful. Do you think you could play out this year? Because you said it should. What if, and so you, can, sit, you sit by the way, they, 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 got, like, they got stomped by the Arizona Cardinals last week. That's, like, that, that's not okay. 29 9. Caleb was 22 of 41. Do you go through this year and you sit Matt down and be like, Wilson, we don't want to fire you Mm -hmm. because of the defense? Mm -hmm. Will you. I don't know if you. I don't know if you really get away with this in the NFL. Will you take. Mm -hmm. Will you just not be the head coach anymore, but you can stay in the organization? Try to what they did to do to Pete Carroll. I guess. But you can stay on the sideline. Maybe. Or you probably can't do that. No one takes a demotion and stays in the building. They just don't. Generally, no. What you probably could do is, but again, you can't trust the Bears to get this done because it would get leaked. I know it would get leaked. But you could be like, Matt, you're not allowed to hire the next offensive coordinator. All right, I mean, we're going to have a third party do that, or we're going to well, yeah, do that. Do, no, do this, I guess, the secret demotion that wouldn't be very secret. Of yeah. like, You're the head coach in name. You're running the defense. Don't even talk to the offensive people. Yeah. Don't even talk to them. But no, but also you're not even hiring an O.C. Yeah, like don't don't. We will hire the OC. You have no concept of that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Don't even talk to the coaches we hire on that side of the ball. Actually. Shane Waldron saying he doesn't script plays is insane. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like, what is that? Like, are you? Do you mean like you're not even te- giving them routes to run? You just like read the defense and feel what you think. You no, no, no. Play. But you know how we talk about how teams are, like even bad offenses at least like can he be good in the beginning of a game because he just scripted out. He just the picks first 10 plays at random. Yes. He doesn't have like he a does sequence. Not, he, he does not. He doesn't he, put a sequence. He together. does not have a sequence to go that he's going to say we're going to run these first ten plays, and this is what we've practiced all week, and this is what we're going to open the game with. He doesn't do that, <laughs> which is insane because even mediocre offenses at least are usually most functional and can win games because they at least do enough on the script. So I played Madden. Right? I just circled it. You know what? I like that. I like that in that situation. Yeah, this isn't ah, that this, this isn't Madden, Waldron. Like that that's insane to me. Um let's skip the break. Let's go to the Bruins and finish this up with the Darwin. So okay. Jesse, take it us away. Thank you. Bruins fans, I they are freaking out right now. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't been good. I get it a little bit. But this is this is this is the time this is the slow your roll time. This is the perfect time to announce the slow your roll uh moment. Because, like, one, I was about to say, it's, it's November 5th. We only started a couple weeks ago. We play 82 games. Mm-hmm. It's all right. It, it's, it's, I don't think it'll be this bad. I just don't. But also, you know, we have excuses why. We know why this is happening. Uh, our backup goalie sucks and is ask, asking to be a starter a little bit in Corpus Allo, which, by the way, he had a 943 save percentage this week. Mm-hmm. Um, Swayman missed camp, and the defense sucks in front of him. So the goalie's going to be bad. That's where we, If we fix the defense, goalie will get better. Why is the defense so bad? There's no chemistry. Mm-hmm. There's just no chemistry. And uh, Carlo, in particular, sucks right now. But I blame his children. He has had another kid last offseason. I'm sure he's not getting a lot of sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, two young kids. Anyway, the chemistry. You know, you brought in a couple. Of, you got a lot of turnover, actually, this offseason. Um, a lot of guys came in and left. Um, obviously, the biggest one, JD. Uh, but this is going to take some time for these guys to learn to play together. Mm-hmm. Elias Lindholm is a great player. He's not playing well at all with David Pasternak right now. And David Pasternak's a good player. They don't know each other's games. They'll learn to play with each other. Mm-hmm. That's, this is the, Hockey is so much chemistry-based and knowing where your line mate is going to be. You know, there's obviously like, you know, we talked about it in the first segment with baseball. Like when play is going on, there's kind of just instinctively places you go based on just how the play is developing in all sports. Uh, Basketball is the same thing. I see how the play is developing. I need to do this. I need to go here. I need to make this move. Hockey is the same thing. The difference is, I think, even more than any other sport, Particularly, I mean, basketball would obviously be the other one that you could compare it to because 
the chemistry aspect. You know, in football, you're just you're running the play. In baseball, you're and whatever. Chemistry in hockey needs to be built over time, and the best teams in the league, although, yes, are a you know, assortment of some of the best talent, always have the best chemistry. One of the reasons I picked Florida last year, you know, the game that played was obviously a big factor. They just played playoff hockey day in and day out, so they were prepared for that the moment it started. They just played that rough-and-tumble game. But the chemistry was elite, just totally elite. They always knew, because, again— there's just um, – what's, what's the word? When it's like just the simple uh, – the 101 parts of the game? Why can't I think of that? Fundamentals. Fundamentals. There's just fundamental things you the do. Things the Yankees don't do. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> there's just fundamental things you're supposed to do in sport. Players developing like this, I'm supposed to go to this area. I'm supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. In hockey, yes, that obviously exists. But you have the mindset of what are my teammates doing? In this situation, I know this guy – likes to go here in this area Mm -hmm. and i know if i know i don't even have to look he's going to be there i'm going to toss the pass in that area because i know in theory my chemistry tells me playing with this guy he'll be there Mm -hmm. i don't have to look bruins have none of that right now and on the defense especially that's bad because like more than that you need to know where your defensive partner is at all times Mm -hmm. because then you need to know where you are because wherever he is you need to be somewhere else and if he's where you are, well, one of you is out of position. Mm-hmm. One of you needs to move. They don't have that right now. They don't have that, like, I just instinctively know where Charlie McAvoy is going to be. I don't have that yet because I haven't played with him enough. I instinctively know where Nikita Zadorov is going to be, so I need to be over here. They don't know where Nikita Zadorov is going to be yet. They don't know. They don't know where each other is going to be. And that's, that's just a domino effect. Mm. The offensive guys have no chemistry. They can't sustain offensive pressure. You're hemmed into your zone a lot. The defensive guys have no chemistry. They cannot get the puck out. Your goaltender has a lot on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. The goal te- No one has chemistry in front of them. The goaltender has to face everything. Well, he can only do so much. You're gonna. That's a, just a losing. That's a losing battle. Mm-hmm. This is a situation, and there's, a, there's things I am concerned about. Pasternak has not played well. Just period. He's not looked good. Marshawn has looked terrible on the ice. That's concerning, especially Marshawn being old. I would hope that just gets better with time, with the chemistry. But right now, Bruins fans, you need to relax. It's not this bad. Mm. When they learn to play with each other, when they learn each other's habits, and they learn each other's style of play, because, again, there's a lot of turnover here, they will get better. Mm. They're too talented to be this bad. Okay. And, again, you know, Swayman missed camp. He's going to need a little bit to get up to speed, that type of stuff. There's a lot of factors here as why they're this bad. Okay. There's excuses. I got you. All right. The Pasternak and Brad Marshall and stuff, that's the stuff to keep an eye on. If that continues, that's bad. All right. That's a problem. Everyone's got to slow their roll. Slow it down. <laughs> All right. Let's finish this up. This week's Darwin Award winner is the New York Yankees. Ah. Not just for losing the World Series. For, as we said, 200 led the league in home runs again. Traded for Jazz Chisholm. Y'all did the same things that you've done for the last five years that didn't end up winning in championships. And also, I mean, we, we got to throw it in. Like, you lost that last one in one of the more embarrassing fashions I've ever seen. The only thing I can think of that was kind of as embarrassing is, do you remember that World Series where the Tigers pitchers made, like, eight errors? Uh, Yes. And that was more strange. Like, when you only have one position and it's the pitcher who are making the errors, it's more just like, what the hell's going on? Like, embarrassing, but it's more just, you know, just weird, fluky. But this is a Yankees team that will, like, as it's come out, the Dodgers literally scouted and said defensively they're dumb. They don't do – they're bad defensively. They're in the wrong spots all the time. They fundamentally play baseball terribly. So you got embarrassed in the World Series. You only won one game. You were up 5-0 in game two, Hmm. and you acted as if all of New York, the fans, the everything was acting like – we're going to be the Red Sox of 2004. Look at this. We're going to come back. And you lost that very same night after taking a 5 nothing lead because Garrett Cole doesn't want to cover first base and Judge misses a fly ball. And Jazz yeah. Chisholm doesn't know where he's supposed to be on relay throws. And, yeah. Cool. And you did it again. You did it again, New York. Insanity. Doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. It's not, I mean, the loss is just so... Like, you you had your backs against the wall, and you made every single mistake seemingly you could. Three errors, mm-hmm. 
five unearned runs in that that last game. Mm-hmm. There was um, a catcher's interference. Mm-hmm. There was a balk. A guy, a pitcher, didn't cover first base on a routine ground ball to first base. Little league stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you lost that game seven to five, and five of those runs were unearned. Those are stats you stop seeing in Babe Ruth, son. That's a stat you. That's not. That's a non-existent stat in the MLB. Like wow. I don't. Like seven runs I mean, scored, also, but also, five like, unearned. I, here's the other thing, though. You can sometimes have a lot of unearned runs. Sure, if it's but the it last usually time. it happens one in one inning. There was one bad error that then led to an inning that exploded. Yeah, but they stretched it out a bit. Like it wasn't just the one inning. Then then they have all the other stuff happen later. They'll allow another run in and another one and another one. Like. It wasn't just a meltdown inning. It was you made mistakes throughout the game that led to more unearned runs. And I think the cherry on top was the tying and then winning runs for the Dodgers were just fundamental small ball. Mm-hmm. Sack flies, good base running, smart at bats, grinding out the at bat, just making contact, putting it in play. Mm-hmm. Things the Yankees could never figure out. Yeah, I know. So congratulations to the New York Yankees, this week's Darwin Award winner. That has been it for Slow Your, Re- uh, Slow Your Roll. Have a great rest of your week. Or maybe the final gentlemen. time if this election goes terribly. Oh, my God.